Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Talks Writers. In this video, we want to have a look at symbolic computing in Python. So let's go for it. Okay, but what is symbolic computing? I can tell you that symbolic computing is a very exciting topic because you know it's a bit different from all the things that you you know from python or the way that you work with these kind of systems and this kind of you know numerical computing systems and scientific computing because you know normally when you work with python when you store some values inside a variable let's call x then you you assign for example the value of 2 to x and you know that okay this is the, the number of 2 and then I want to do some numerical computation with this. You can add some values to that or just, you know, assign it to an array and this kind of stuff. But just imagine in a real world calculus, for example, when you have a function of x squared and you want to derive the derivative of this and you know that it becomes 2x, 2 multiplied by x, 2 times x, you don't care what the value of x is. And you work just with the symbols. So x here is a symbol, and that's where this name symbolic algebra comes from. So in these techniques, in these kind of you know computer systems, it's called you can see it, it's computer algebra systems or CAS. In these kind of systems, you work with the symbols and this and the and the software can calculate, can perform computation based upon these symbols. And doesn't care about the values so this is very very similar to what the way that we work with this kind of mathematical forms and equations in in for example calculus or other fields of mathematics and there are a bunch of you know famous uh, computer algebra systems CAS SymPy is for for the Python word is one of the best ones in Python word there are SAG and uh, or sage i think not sure what is the correct pronunciation of this but yeah i think it is sage and then uh you know there is also another fa famous one for called maple you may have heard about it that has also a minimal engine in matlab so the symbol of computing in matlab is is built upon maple so maple is also very famous and there are also a bunch of others but in this video, we want to have a look at SymPy, a quick look at SymPy. It's quite simple. When you start to work to use it, then you see that it's quite simple. So the first thing you need to do is you import things from SymPy and then you in initialize the printing. In newer versions, you can edit a session. You will see that in the next video when we want to solve something using SymPy. And you see that with init session, it becomes much simpler because it also initializes printing and other stuff. But in order to start, you know, you need to initialize variables. You need to define variables as symbols. So you say that X is a symbol of X. It can be capital X or, you know, uh, something else. This is actually what, how the system, the CIS system sees the variable X. And you can see here when you say pi and pi, you know, when we have imported everything from SymPy, pi is actually the pi of SymPy. And it's not, it's different from the pi from, for example, NumPy that was actually numerics. So uh, here you say pi plus x squared and you see that computer system automatically detects that, okay, this is a symbolic expression. And you can define more symbols. And when you say type of a symbol, it tells you that uh, a type of the variable, it tells you that this is a symbol actually. And you can also say that, okay, it's a positive. Sometimes it's very useful. You will see in the next video. Sometimes it's very useful to solve equations using this, uh, you know, positive true or real true that is not a complex number. Sometimes when you solve um, an equation that has an imaginary equation, an imaginary solution, then it becomes useful to define these things as real. And you can see that it has also support for complex numbers. Yeah, obviously. And then, um, yeah, for I, for the imagi imaginary part, you, 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 you need to use the capital I. For rational numbers, for fractions, let's say, it's also quite simple. You can see, you can see, you can say the rational for five, and it means four over five. And this is very different. If you divide it in Python, then it calculates the, the, the numerical output for you. But in this case, you can define rational numbers. But what if you want to evaluate the expressions? Like, 
we have this evaluate this expression and we want to see the real value the, numer the numerical output of it then we can use eval f and eval f is what for example here you can see that okay it says that uh, you know calculate the pi the value of pi with this this the, this is actually the precision the accuracy and another technique is actually SOPS. This is very useful. You say that, okay, it is this is Y actually, and you SOP substitute X with this value, 1.5. And then when you say that N of Y SOPS, and then it gives you the, the, the numerical value. So it can be also com uh, combined with NumPy. For example, here you can see that it's it has been used for plotting an expression. But this kind of, you know, this is a very, very, you know, you, you can see that it's it has, it has used a nested for, nested loop inside this array, this array uh, expression, but this becomes a very slow. So if you use this kind of expressions, you can see that for, for a large number of numbers, if you are going to deal with, you know, huge collections, it becomes very slow. And the correct way to treat this kind of stuff instead of point by point and these expressions is using lam uh, lambda phi. And the name comes uh, from the lambda expressions. We this co we covered that in the first video. And lam lambda phi means make something, uh, make lambda expression out of something. So when you say that, okay, this is lambda phi x x plus pi squared, and when you say that, okay, this is num pi, it means that yeah. Com convert this from a NumPy expression to a SymPy expression. And then you can easily and quickly calculate, for example, the value of f for a vector, because now it becomes a sort of, you know, NumPy expression. And that's why Lambda Phi uh, is very useful. And this is actually how it works. So we can see that here, if we go for, for example, this is a way that you can uh, you know, measure the performance of things. This is a runtime inside, uh, the way that you can measure runtimes inside Jupyter Notebooks. And when you go for the you know, regular expression, for the, uh, for the expression that we had regularly, then it takes, for example, you can see 28 milliseconds per loop. But if we do that using uh, this kind of lambda phi things, then it becomes two microseconds per uh, per loop actually. So it becomes a very fast, you know, lots of I can say many order of magnitudes faster. So for algebraic expressions for manipulations, we have expanded factor. It's uh, you know when you have a look at this, there are lots of functions in SymPy, and they're very similar to the things that we have learned in mathematics in high school. So you can see that okay, you can say expand this, and then it gives you this one, and also you have simplify, and it's also it's a reverse order, reverse things, and also can be used for trigonometric functions. And we have factor. Factor is the you know. The, the 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 inverse operation of that. So when you say that factor of this, then it you know it makes it uh, like this. But um, yeah, simpl simplify is also a combination of expand and factor. As I said, it can be used for trigonometric functions. That did you know, for example, this famous equation in. Uh, uh, trigonometry equals one and in this case you can see that yeah it understands it but you should pay attention that we have already defined a as a symbol and that's how it works and the sine and cosine uh, are coming from SymPy. this is also important to to keep in your mind that if you use sim sinus and cosine of um, the, the numpy the numpy package then it doesn't work these these are actually defined in 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 SymPy. And apart together, this is uh, you know very useful for fractions for rational things. So you can see that how it works is quite obvious that you can say apart, and then it calculates you know the sort of uh, the composition for you. And when you say together, then it calculates you know the sort of uh, addition. And you can also use simplify again on this, so it works uh, in the same way. And for differentiation and calculus, we have differentiation and integration. So you can see that here it's super simple. You say that it is y, we, we already defined it. So it is x plus pi squared. And when you say differentiate it according to x, then it calculates the differentiation. 
and also yeah you can uh, calculate a second order derivative and it's the same that you say diff two times by x or x2 so this is a sort of second order or higher orders and it's quite also simple to calculate the you know for because simpy has lots of functions lots of building functions special functions and including this trig trigonometric ones but uh, you can calculate the derivative alonso integral of this uh, of these functions as well as as demonstrated here and for integrations that's the same you can say that okay for in, in, integrate this uh, and also for you know for integrals with uh, with um, with boundaries that are called um, definite uh, integrals so you can see that for definite integrals it can be also used using these kind of notations so integrate f for the value of x from minus one to one and it can be also used for more complex uh, more complex expressions and a sum of products are useful for defining series although it has you know specific uh, you know operations for series but this is actually the way that you are familiar with, with a symbol and then the way that um, you can use you you define this sort of sigma expressions for sum and also for products so and then you can use eval f to get the real and actually the, the numerical uh, value out of it for the limits, this is also you know useful in uh, in mathematics in calculus. So when you use the limits, for example, the famous uh, sign over x when x approaches zero, it's one. So you can see that yeah, it actually is uh, capable of computing that. And also for the um, for one of the ways that you can calculate the derivative of a function at point at any point, like here x. Uh, this is actually the way that you calculate it with this uh, with h approaching zero so you can see that here it has defined it and then it checks if the the the, the symbol of computing returns the the correct value the similar the same value that, that for example the differentiation operation has returned already and it's you see that they are the same and also for infinity you can use the symbols and uh, this is the way that you can define infinity in, in SymPy. And also for series, for example, you can say that okay for this series expression of a, this is exponential of x and then you can expand it in a series. You can see that it also gives you the, the order of accuracy. So we can easily expand a series for, for example, it can be used for Taylor series and other other famous series as well. And you can also uh, specify the, the accuracy that you want to have. You can omit, you know, after, for example, the precision of five, the order, the order of magnitude of five, you don't need a series and you can omit it. This is the way that you can define it, actually. So this is how these uh, series uh, actually work in, in SymPy. And uh, for linear algebra, for uh, for matrix operations and also for vector operations, you can do all of them using symbolic computing. These are actually very, very useful when we start to talk about finite element and the way that we want to use these things in finite element formulation. It will help us to understand finite element much better. So you can easily play with these things and see the output instead of calculating things uh, manually by by hand actually and it's you can see that it's also capable of uh, uh, computing the, de the determinant and an inverse of matrix of a matrix in a symbolic way actually and also for solving equations yeah it is a useful feature we will use it later so you can easily solve equations in this case for example it is x squared minus one and solving for x it is minus one and one so uh, it can be used for solving also equations that uh, don't have a real solution. In this case, they have imaginary solutions, and you can see that yeah, it's capable of solving that, solving them, and also for solving system of uh, equations, it's capable of doing that. So both sides are equal to zero, and then you say that solve it for x and y, and it returns one and zero. In this case. Uh, and it can be used for solving a system, actually system of equations that are defined symbolically. It shouldn't be uh, numerical. You, you see that it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't have numerical output necessarily. And it's capable of solving such equations. 
And uh, yeah, this is actually the short tutorial that we wanted uh, to have on uh, on SimPy. But uh, in the next video, I've used SimPy to solve uh, a, an ordinary differential equation, which can be very, very interesting to see how, that how you can use all these techniques to, to solve uh, a differential equation. So yeah, just enjoy it and make sure to, to just go through this and cover the topics because yeah, we will use SimPy in infinite element computation. Have fun and yeah, see you later.